Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the last session for the 2022 Justice Center Summit on technology related assistance for individuals with disabilities. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the Justice Center's Trade Director, Melinda Dolezal, and I'll see you all after the break. Thank you so much, Davin, and um, welcome everybody on this final session of the Justice Center's uh, Summit for this year. Hopefully we'll be closing it out in um, exciting fashion. Um, if anybody knows me or if you don't know me, um, assistive technology is what makes me the bubbly, exciting person that I am. So if we ever go too quickly or if you have any questions, again, feel free to put it in the chat. And if we, um, by some chance happen to not get to a question before the end of this presentation, our contact information will be at the end of the PowerPoint. So bear with me for one quick second. Um, we do have some information that we will be sharing um, via PowerPoint. And I will also be joined by um, some of our amazing trade staff for this presentation. All right, and I hope everybody can see that. If anybody wants to type in the chat or give me a nod on camera, I see a nod, we're good to go. I so again, it. welcome um, everybody. This is the Technology Related Assistance for Individuals with Disabilities Program, also known as TRADE. Sometimes we even get called TRIAD, but I assure you it is in fact TRADE. Um, we're going to be reviewing a whole bunch of things today, um, but our goal is to give you an overview of the program, what even is assistive technology, how it can help people live in more independent um, settings, and hopefully lots of other things along the way. So this is our, um, our agenda for this afternoon. Uh, really, who are we, what do we do, what are our goals, and how can we help you, your family members, and the people that you work with? We're also going to be going over what is assistive technology or what we call AT. Just like the rest of you, we're very heavy in the acronym world and we have our own separate language. So if for some reason we say something you're not sure about, just type it in the chat. Um, but again, we will be saying AT pretty frequently. Uh, we'll be reviewing what it is that trade does with that AT. Um, and even though trade is a service that can help people of any age from birth to golden years, we will be focusing primarily on um, living independently. So maybe people coming out of a nursing home, living um, in congregate settings and living in more independent settings after that. So things like that, um, which is our trade and independent living um, portion of the presentation. We'll give you guys a quick break to um, breathe and um, hopefully recap a little bit. And at that, after that, we'll be doing um, a discussion between myself and the amazing trade staff who we're lucky enough to have here this afternoon. And then we'll close it out with just a quick review of our interagency partnership on assistive technology or IPET Council. So we're already getting in with the, the acronyms and we only just started. So without further ado, um, we are your lovely panelists for this afternoon um, and I'll get us started. My name is Melinda Dolzal, um, Dole like the fruit and then Zal like that's all folks. I've been with the Justice Center's Trade Department for about three and a half years. I actually started in our intake unit in the call center and prior to that I've worked at non-for-profit agencies in the OPWDD world in Buffalo, the Capital District, Oneonta and probably a few others I'm forgetting about. Um, we also have Brendan Stapley, who is a Senior Research Specialist at the Center for Assistive Technology at the University of Buffalo. Um, I'll let Brendan say a few words. Hey, thanks, Melinda. Um, so I'm Brendan Stapley. We're, I'm at UB uh, Center for Assistive Technology, or we call it colloquially CAT, UB CAT, um, which always disappoints my nieces when, she, when they find out it's not actually CATs that we do anything with, but a lot of assistive technology stuff. Um, I have been working for UB just those past uh, four years now. Before that, I was getting in, I got into assistive technology maybe, oh geez, longer ago than I want to remember, about 15 years or so ago, um, starting off with Aspire of Western New York, which is in Western New York. Um, they provide services to people with disabilities uh, through like OPWDD, and that's going to be, they have uh, clinical services, they have um, residential services and the habilitation and vocational rehabilitation services. Great. Thank you so much, Brendan. And he's um, one of our go-to, um, you know, knowledge hubs for smart home technology. So sorry, I just called you a hub, but you very much are a, an amazing resource for um, all kinds of different portions of assistive technology. So thank you so much. We also call me tech geek here. I'm just a resident tech geek. So that's, hey, that's yeah. not a bad thing. <laughs> Um, and then April Diffie, who is our staff up in um, Queensbury. I always say Glens Falls, but I, get, I always get it wrong. Um, she is the trade manager at the Southern Adirondack Independent Living Center. Um, and I will let her say a couple of words. 
Thank you, Melinda. Uh, my name is April Diffie, and I am the trade manager at the Southern Adirondack Independent Living Center in Queensbury. Um, I've been with the agency for um, just starting off on my eighth year here. Five of those years have been with the trade program. Um, we have just about everything you can imagine here, and if we don't have it here, we can certainly find a way to get it. Um, a lot of our services do go out to the MFP population or those, you know, 65 and older. But as Melinda did say, we do um, have a brand new EI room that we just um, started. And we also um, have a lot of assistive technology as well. We also have an adaptive kitchen, which if you've never seen one of those, it's, it's very, very neat. So um, we're looking to um, both Brendan and April later in the presentation for their perspectives on, um, you know, advice on using assistive technology and, you know, a lot of the things that they do day to day. We do have a third staff that will be joining us a little bit later in the presentation, and that is Casey Thomas from the Trade Center in the Hudson Valley, which is based out of um, the Kingston area, Lake Katrine, I may have said it wrong, I do apologize if I did. Um, Casey has worked in the field for 10 years. Um, the past two have been at the Hudson Valley Regional Trade Center, wraparound services of the Hudson Valley. Um, she has attended various AT conventions, um, company, de company demonstrations on devices and 3D printing fabrications presentations. So um, as with Brandon and April, a wonderful resource and very, very knowledgeable. So again, um, later on in the presentation, um, we'll be asking them some questions, hopefully giving you guys a better sense about you know, who we are, what we do and ways that you could utilize our services um, or the people that you know could utilize our services. So who are we, what do we want and um, what are our goals? So trade's actually been around for a very long time. Um, I call it the best kept secret in New York and I don't want it to be this best kept secret in New York. We want you guys to tell your friends, family, neighbors, uncles, dogs, cousins, nephews, whoever. Um, we were established by the Technology Related Assistance for Individuals with Disabilities Act of 1988. So that's kind of when the organization as a whole started, but it's been through you know several iterations and evolved quite a bit in that time. We were overseen by the Commission on Quality of care and advocacy for persons with disabilities into 2013. Uh, and then after that, we were um, incorporated as part of the New York State Justice Center, where we remain to this day. Uh, we're actually part of the Office of Outreach Prevention and Support, also known colloquially as OOPS. Um, so if you were part of the presentations for PQI or Prevention and Quality Improvement and SDMC or Surrogate Decision Making Committee, those are our sister programs that we work very closely with. And so. Um, we serve New Yorkers of all ages and abilities by promoting greater independence in the lives of people with disabilities, um, and that's of all ages, and it's um, everything from education, employment, community living, really every single part of a person's day-to-day -day life. Um, and again, we do serve individuals um, birth to three through early intervention. Um, and then up through, again, retirement and golden years. So it really, for us, it doesn't matter where somebody is in their lives as long as this is, technology is appropriate for them. And just to give you guys a little bit of background, you know, on what kind of establishes us, Trade's actually a federal program that's established by the Administration on Community Living. There's actually a trade, quote unquote, a trade program in every state in the country and every territory. So if you were on vacation in Nebraska, if you're like my family and like corn, um, there is an AT program there. If you are going to a wedding in Texas, there is an AT program there. So if you, for some reason, need something, can't bring it on a plane or it's too cumbersome or you only need it for a brief time, you could go to those programs and do, you know, exactly what we do with trade. Um, and um, we offer very similar services. However, in New York, we're very, very lucky. We actually work with um, three state um, partners, two agencies and three state partners. The first is early intervention, which is um, technology for children age birth to three. So those critical years when kiddos are you know, working on cause and effect, sensory, all of those things that are extremely important. Um, Access VR, we work with them to provide technology for individuals typically age 14 and up, but we do have some wiggle room um, and we provide those devices for people that, you know, may need note-taking devices. They may need devices to help them wake up on time for work. Um, it's a pretty vast, you know, category of what could fall under that. And then finding, finally, money follows the person or what we call MFP. These are devices typically for older New Yorkers or people who are coming out of a nursing home or are coming out of a congregate setting to live somewhere more independently or maintain independence at home. So these are the things that establish trade, even though we have funding up there. It's not that we provide funding for these things. These are the things that allow us to purchase new assistive technology devices, um, 
make sure that our program staff have what they need in order to do the amazing jobs that they do. Um, and there are trade um, programs, again, throughout the country. I'd be happy to put the information in the chat at the end of this presentation. So what is AT? Hopefully nobody's fallen asleep because we also just started, but we have a poll question for you because I want to kind of pick your brains a little bit and see where everybody is at when it comes to this strange world of AT. So we have a few things on the next slide. I want you to take a look, you know, again, shake your arms a little bit, wake yourselves up. Um, and we want you guys to guess how many of these things do you think are AT? So take a look. Um, what we're going to ask you guys in a second um, it's just the total. You don't have to pick, you know, picture two, picture four. So just in case you guys, um, it's not very clear or you're not sure, the first picture is a card holder um, with a large print playing card. Um, is that a full house? I, don't know, I can't play poker. Um, hopefully it's a good hold or good hand. Um, next are some pencil grips. Um, you may have seen these, you know, all throughout school or currently, you know, um, there's three there. One is blue, one is pink, and one is green. The third picture is a page divider that kind of darkens out the print if you're not reading that line of text. The next picture on the bottom to the left is a light blue sock aid. On the fifth picture, we've got some books that are lifting up a computer monitor. And the sixth is um, just a handy dandy Sherlock Holmes uh, magnifying glass. So take a look at these. We're gonna pull up the poll. If you think that one is, you know, you can just put that. If you think, you know, pretty much self-explanatory for that. So. I don't have the Jeopardy theme, but um, we'll give you guys about 10, 15 seconds and then, you know, take your best guess. I know I skipped it, but um, we are curious to see what you guys thought. So um, let's go ahead and see those poll results. So most of you did pretty good, yes. A um, couple of people say only one, uh, some threes, fours, fives, and yep, about 62% of you got the correct answer. So these are all assistive technology, believe it or not. Surprise, just in case anybody wasn't sure. So some of you may be scratching your head and saying, or your head and saying what do you mean these are AT? Because we're literally looking at some books and this means that Sherlock Holmes was using assistive technology. So assistive technology is any item, product, or piece of equipment that can be used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities. So devices can be low or high tech. Um, I remember when I was, uh, I was an MSC for a little while, and the devices that we would see come across, you know, um, for requests or for questions were like old Dynavoxes um, for communication and stuff like that. Um, and that's all that I really knew about. But devices can be low tech, like you saw the pencil grips, or even, you know, stacking some books to elevate your computer is technically assistive technology, or it can be much more high tech, which we'll see in some examples on the next few slides. But yes, all of those do qualify as assistive technology. And for many of our, you know, I would say for many of our staff, they ideally, you know, we try to find the simplest solutions for people rather than go, you know, from zero to 100. So just to give you guys some, you know, some pictures to go along with the, um, the AT title um, for, you know, I'm sure everybody's seen uh, the wheelchair type on the left. Some of our, um, you know, our trade centers will have even more than that, things like transport chairs, different kinds of rollators, occasionally scooters. So um, there's more than one type of pretty much everything within the AT world. And on the right there, if you've never seen that, that is what we call um, a gate trainer or a pacer. And this is a Riften extra large pacer. So if somebody, you know, is learning how to walk again or can't bear a lot of weight, a device like this can help them in, you know, in working on those skills. Uh, we have some medication administration devices. Um, we have some actually that our trade staff will be showing off, you know, on camera if you want to see how they work or ask questions. The one on the left um, is one that can be programmed by date and by time. If you can see there kind of in the middle is a little digital clock. And then on the right is a Priya robot, which is a little bit more high tech. Um, some people might prefer more high tech and some people may not need it. And that's totally fine. Um, the Priya, you know, has things like mobile alerts, um, even things like two-way calling. It'll tell you when your medication is low or when it's time to actually take something. And then on the more low-tech end of the spectrum, we have an adaptive cutting board. 
um, which if you can see, it's got kind of, you know, some spiky points coming up to hold, you know, a vegetable or anything that you're trying to cut. And then also um, just kind of like a little wedge on the back to hold something in place. And then on the right is an adaptive pot holder that has some little um, suction cups to keep the pot there from moving around. So again, there's no computer chips in these things. This isn't, you know, super high tech, but that's okay because again, not everybody has the same needs when it comes to assistive technology. And then we also have daily living devices. So on the left is just a regular old shower bench. Um, we do have quite a few of these in our inventory. And on the right is uh, not from 2001. It is, and by 2001, I mean a space odyssey, not the year 2001. Um, this is an OB robot. It is used uh, for people who want to feed themselves but may need what's called a switch. So this can be operated with a foot, you know, basically looks like a foot pedal. Um, so a person can um, make it, you know, basically choose what's in the bowls, you know, based on that switch and based on, you know, what the person wants to eat. Um, they're very, very neat, uh, but again, they're not for everybody. Uh, and these are just eight devices that scratch the surface of what we, you know, what we have in trade and what is available out in the world. Um, things change rapidly with technology outside of what we do. I mean, obviously generations of phones, computers that are out there, um, cars, everything. So for us, the same thing happens. So for somebody like me that came from, again, the world of the old Dynavoxes, um, technology changes all the time and we do our very best to be on the cutting edge. And these are, again, just some of the things that you may see if you wanted to go to a trade center. So now we know kind of what AT is um, and we want to show what we do with all of this AT. Um, and an overview of kind of what we do as a program and what you can expect if you come to us in need of services. So there's actually 12 regional trade centers across New York State. Uh, if you look closely at this map, those that are in blue are the areas where our speakers are from. Again, CAT out at um, SUNY Buffalo, the Center for System Technology. Uh, SAIL or Southern Adirondack Independent Living Center out in, they're kind of, I mean, they are capital district all the way up from Warren County down to Columbian Green. And then wraparound services of the Hudson Valley covering um, the Hudson Valley, Ulster, Sullivan, Orange, and Rockland counties. But again, there are um, uh, nine others that cover, you know, various geographic areas and population sizes. You know, we have a lot of area up in the North Country for our SUNY Plattsburgh's program, but fewer people and then smaller land territory down in New York City, but obviously quite a few more people than the North Country. Each trade program, um, has their own inventory. So all of those devices that we gave you examples on, each trade center will have um, hundreds of devices, if not thousands available for people to learn more about, um, try out and, and more as we go into what trade actually does. So, um, and then each trade center's contact information is listed on our website, which we will be putting in the chat. Uh, and you can search by county if you're not quite sure. Sometimes we'll have people reach out with questions or queries and we really, once we know where, the, where you are from, then we can start referring you to the trade center closest to you. Sometimes our trade centers do loan across um, their county borders. It's really up to the trade center on you know, how far away it is. So we do all stay in constant communication with each other. I bounce around pretty frequently, making sure that everybody has everything they need, um, but we're always here if people have questions. So this is where we are. That's the kind of stuff we have, but what do we do? So um, trade loans are our bread and butter. Uh, it's probably the thing that people know us the most for, if you've um, heard of us at all. It's, I describe it like a library. Um, people can come to a trade center. They can borrow a device for a few weeks, see how it's going to work. Is it uh, just total waste of time or is this the greatest thing since sliced bread? Um, so for us, it's a great opportunity, you know, for people, it's a great opportunity to see what all is out there, especially with how quickly things change. Some common reasons, you know, people might want to borrow a device is if um, they have a new or emerging need, they're not sure what they want to try. Maybe insurance is kind of taking a while uh, and they need something in between or a device breaks. These are all some reasons, you know, people are more than welcome to come to us, contact us and see if we have something that can help. And then device compare and contrast, or what we call a demonstration, is exploring options that an individual may not know about. So for us, somebody could come to us needing one thing, and then we may ask, you know, do you also have 
a need for maybe cooking dinner or for, um, you know, getting your socks on or getting dressed in the morning, because that can really help us, you know, decide, hey, should we also offer this other device for them to come check out, touch, um, ask, you know, to see if there's information on it. And that way a person can make an informed decision because there's so much out there and you can see, you know, maybe an ad or a commercial that looks, you know, amazing, but it's just not the right device for you. So our goal is again, to have those devices available for people to contrast and compare. We want to offer similar things. You know, we don't want to offer you um, a reacher for a high shelf and then also, you know, a sensory device for a kiddo. I mean, we want to have things that you'll be able to actually compare apples to apples device donation. A lot of times we have things that are donated to us. And what we do is we, we fix them, clean them and redistribute them to um, local communities. A lot of times we'll get donated things like wheelchairs, shower benches, crutches, canes, things like that. And so we do our best to have those available. It's um, not a guarantee, but we do, we are pretty frequently able to offer that to people. Some other things that we offer are trainings. Um, we have a whole variety of things that our staff are well versed in. Here's just a couple of examples. Um, we have, you know, trainings on assistive technology in an individualized education plan or an IEP. Um, this is a question that comes up pretty frequently as kiddos navigate the education system. What are, you know, what are they um, able to receive? Who covers what? How does documentation look? So that's something that we can easily help with. Uh, people will come to us with questions about funding options. How do we pay for these devices? So that's another thing that we can offer. Uh, we also offer you know, in-depth trainings on specific types of devices. We have programs that are well-versed in communication devices. So if you come to us and say, hey, we want a professional development on a certain thing, we're usually more than able to find a staff that is the perfect fit. We've done trainings on accessibility. Um, workplace accommodations, you know, so if there's something you're curious about, let us know. We are able to offer um, trainings that are through Zoom or WebEx, you know, especially with COVID. Uh, we adjusted our services to meet the needs of the people in the state that were interested um, in receiving our services. And uh, we can also customize things if, you know, if there's something we don't have in our, in, in our catalog, we'll do what we can um, to make that happen. Public awareness, we do a lot of tabling events, we do a lot of conferences to get, you know, the word out there about who we are and what we do. Uh, I myself have been to several, a lot of the trade staff um, go pretty frequently. We have a trade staff actually who I think is on um, the web webinar who did Trade on the Trails, which is our Syracuse site at Access CNY. They partnered with a local organization to have some wheelchairs, um, some other mobility devices available for people to try and to um, walk and wheel down the Erie Canal. So you may see us out and about. If there's an event that you have going on that you'd like us to participate in, let us know. Um, we'll be doing a few things in the spring and as things are opening up, we wanna make that an option for you know those of you that are interested in having our lovely staff um, grace you with our presence. And finally, technical assistance. Uh, we provide some consultation and help for larger you know, and community initiatives you know, related to things like accessibility, um, related to, you know, whether it's digital or actual, you know, physical accessibility to a building and offering suggestions for systemic um, improvements. Uh, just some examples of some of the things that our trade centers have done. Um, actually, uh, SUNY Buffalo worked with the Niagara School District for the Perry Project to help train teachers on accessibility that features that they could use with their students. Um, our center in Utica worked with a second grade class to implement a training curriculum on um, reading and writing, or I believe writing, um, and helping students to get used to using tablets. And then we also had our center up in Plattsburgh that worked to increase accessibility at um, Paul Smith College for their hiking trails. So if there's something in your day-to-day -day lives that you think could be made better through assistive technology, or if you're not sure, um, feel free to reach out, contact us. You know, we're always happy to, you know, see what we can do. So just some other things that we, that I like to share with people, you know, that we get some pretty frequent questions on. Uh, we're unable to purchase devices for people to own. So if somebody comes to us and says, I need to keep this permanently, we may not be able to accommodate that if it's not something that we could donate because our inventory are items that we want to reloan to people and re you know show to people for as long as we possibly can. We can point you in the right direction to some organizations that provide funding, but we can't um, purchase a device for people. And that's based on our legislation, what establishes our program. Our loans are typically for 60 days, and that's about two months. 
um, but they can be extended. So if you borrow a device and insurance has taken a long time, just call us, call the trade center that you borrowed it from, see what, you know, if they have a wait list, if they don't, um, it's up to them. But sometimes we are able to extend a loan. We just ask, you know, please that you bring them back as soon as you don't need them because there are other people that may need them just as more. And again, we do accept donated equipment with exception. Um, our centers really can't take things like hospital beds. Uh, and we don't typically have them for loan because they're pretty big. Our space is limited and we want to make sure that everything is clean and sanitized and safe to go out. And it's a little tricky with things like mattresses. Um, if we aren't able to take it, we do try and point you in the right direction of other donation sites in your communities. Um, a lot of the, you know, everything that does come into a trade center is cleaned using either a hub scrub, which is a giant industrial, essentially a dishwasher for assistive technology. Uh, a lot of our centers use UV or they um, have their own cleaning procedures that they use. So um, just know that when you do borrow a device or use one, it is um, as maintained and cleaned as we possibly can get it. And if you are interested in donating a device, um, reach out you know, directly to the Trade Center nearest you. If you're not sure, feel free to contact me and I'm happy to um, establish contact and point you in the right direction. And so this is what it might look like if you did want to contact a Trade Center. Um, you do not have to have a specific device in mind. We actually encourage people to come in with an open mind. Sometimes people will come in 100% set on something and there may be a more cost-effective option. There may be a simpler option. Some people you know, prefer things that are very high-tech and some people prefer things that are very low-tech. So we do our best to meet those you know, preferences um, and we can do that as to the best of our ability if people come in kind of open to seeing what's out there. So people can start the process by giving us a call, sending us an email, just reaching out and asking questions that could lead to us either referring you to our trade centers. This is something that we do, or maybe it's something a little outside of what we do. Maybe, you know, if people have a question about how do I enroll in a waiver for assistive technology, we could, we would refer you probably to whatever that waiver program happens to be. Several of our trade centers are actually located in independent living centers that have in-house resources for things like the um, traumatic brain injury waiver, nursing home transition diversion waiver, and several others. Uh, if people are interested in seeing what technology we have or might need to borrow something, we would welcome you in for a device demonstration. We do them sometimes remote or virtually, uh, especially again during the height of COVID. Um, it's great if people can come in and, and actually use the devices uh, like in person, but again, we understand, you know, certain people are in different places um, or it's more convenient to do it virtually. If that goes well, we might say you can borrow this device, take it on all alone, see if it's going to work for you at work or at home or at school. And after two weeks, um, we would, you know, or after two months, my apologies, um, we would look to see kind of where, where are we at. Um, you don't have to keep it for two months. That's just our standard uh, loan period. And if we can extend it, <clears throat> then we will do so. Um, if not, then you would return the device and we could help with resources again to purchase one. And that could be a uh, low interest loan that's specific to assistive technology. It could be donation programs, could be a variety of things. One exciting thing that we have coming on the pipeline is we have several trade centers that have recently started 3D printing. And what we're gonna do with that are, um, it's different from center to center, but we are looking to make simple devices like zipper pulls, uh, grips for eating utensils, um, little things like that, communication devices through lamp. Um, it really the needs of the region. So if this is something that you're interested in receiving more information on, or if you have resources in the community that you think would be good partners, we're always happy to meet new people and um, see what else we can do to help out in, um, with our neighbors in New York. So one more poll, lucky, lucky. So now that we've, we've told you what AT is, who we are, when we were established, um, there will be a quiz. No, there won't. We were established again. 1988 and we're going strong today. Uh, we want to know what you think you need in order to use trade. So we're going to pull up, we're going to pull up the poll and we just want you to, to click on the answer that you think is the most appropriate. And again, this is what do you or the person that you're maybe working with or know need in order to use trade? Do you need to be enrolled in a Medicaid waiver like the home and community based services or HCBS, NHTD, et cetera? Do you need private insurance? Do you need a doctor's license or a professional license, like a physical therapist? Or do you just need questions about AT and how it can help people? So again, we'll give you about 10 seconds. Um, 
I almost said there's no right or wrong answer. There is a right answer. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, what did you guys think? 80% of you are spot on. Um, people don't need to be involved in a waiver. They do not need private insurance. They don't need insurance at all. Um, they don't need to be a doctor or a physical therapist. All you need is questions about AT and how it can help people. And I'll elaborate a little bit on this um, in just a second. So everyone um, can use trade. It could be, um, you know, anybody could contact trade, even a person who needs the device, uh, a, you know, a parent, a caregiver, a circle of support, um, care coordinator, you name it, uh, as long as the person who is utilizing the device, it is appropriate for them. That's all that really matters. And I do say that with a caveat, we do have some centers that have specific requirements for specific devices. What I mean by that is we have some very, very high tech devices that um, for people's own safety, we wanna make sure they are appropriate. We have things like eye gaze technology, Toby Dynavox. Those are devices that can help people type using their pupils. Um, and they, are, they tend to be um, a little bit more fragile and much more uh, specialized. So uh, particular our Long Island site has specific documentation requirements such as a doctor's note. However, anybody can contact the Trade Center for information. And if you're not sure, feel free to reach out again to your local Trade Center to ask. Most of our devices are um, things that, you know, people can borrow without much documentation, if any. We will ask things like your height and weight if somebody is looking to borrow a wheelchair because we want to make sure that it's fitted to you. Um, or to the person that's using it. For us, disability can be long or short term. It could be, you know, somebody, um, they fell, they broke their leg, uh, assumedly the leg is going to heal, and eventually they won't need that device anymore. Or it could be long term, it could be a device for maybe a kiddo who, um, you know, as they've grown up, EI is learning, you know, maybe they're nonverbal, and they may need a communication device. So we can help with seeing what devices are out there that are going to work best for that kiddo. So, um, it really, again, age doesn't matter to us, could be, again, birth to however old, um, and it doesn't matter, you know, if it's a, if the person has uh, a developmental disability, um, what could be considered, you know, something short term, but again, things are unclear sometimes, and disability is a broad, you know, is a broad um, spectrum of things. So why use trade? Again, we've told you who we are, what we do why we're awesome, but we're also awesome because we provide short-term accommodations if somebody is waiting for a device to be repaired. Uh, my time as an MSC, prior to care coordination, I had plenty of circumstances where somebody had part of their wheelchair broke and it takes sometimes a while for it to be repaired or maybe Medicaid won't pay for it because it's been within the time frame that you know it can't be replaced due to their own policies. Uh, trade can potentially offer a solution for that time frame or at least resources that can help things be repaired. Try it before you buy it. Um, I've known plenty and plenty and plenty of people who have seen the newest, latest, greatest thing. I mean, even outside of assistive technology, I don't know how many friends I have that need the newest whatever phone, they get it and well, it's, it's okay, but it's not amazing. And it's even more important if this is a device that you're using day in and day out and you rely on for a very important part of your um, daily activities. So trying it before you buy it, is this simpler device gonna work better for you or is this more high tech one gonna work? Is this app gonna work best for your child or is this one? Um, so trying that out before you actually buy it can go a long, long way. And it's also great for justification for insurance, especially these days. Um, I mean, I think it's always been that way, but especially now, justification just goes that much farther if you can say, you know, we've tried this, my child has tried this, the person on my caseload has tried this, and we have documentation for several weeks that we've shown improvement in their, um, you know, keeping time, taking notes, you know, working on cause and effect, all of these things. And our services are free. Um, and that means, you know, our loans are free. Um, again, please bring our equipment back. Um, our demonstrations are free. Trainings are free. Uh, we do have some trade centers that do partner with other state organizations um, like Access VR. They may have things like evaluations that do have a fee associated with them, but know that trade itself um, 
is, you know, free for loans, demos, and things like that. If you're ever not sure, I'll probably say this a whole bunch of times, but you know, feel free to contact us if you're not sure or if you have any questions. So as I mentioned, um, a large portion of our loans, demos, and other activities go towards supporting individuals who are transitioning out of uh, nursing homes, congregate settings, you know, even uh, residential programs, things like that. This isn't to say that we don't also work with, you know, every other population uh, that may need assistive technology, but we really want to highlight, you know, some of the benefits of assistive technology in this area and why it really should be something that should be explored for everybody that it may be appropriate for. And again, everybody is different. Things may not, you know, what works for one person may not work for somebody else. Um, but that all goes back to person-centered planning. So the benefits of the least restrictive setting, a residential option, I'm sure, you know, everybody has seen these or, you know, especially again, I keep saying with COVID, with COVID, um, there's a lot of things that, you know, I've heard organizations exploring and some of these are AT to meet the needs of things like staffing. You know, if somebody needs um, a few extra um, prompts or assist, you know, some assistance with things like taking medication or making sure that they're doing things on time. Um, this is something that some devices may be able to assist with. Um, least restrictive residential options obviously is more person-centered. It gives people more of an option to choose where they want to go and where they're most comfortable. Um, this creates more opportunities for community building and decision making. And it's less expensive than options like skilled nursing homes and nursing facilities. Um, on ACL, um, recent information says that uh, skilled nursing facilities can cost an average of $75,000 a year. Public residential facilities for people with disabilities average $225,000 a year. Um, each state is different, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's expensive. Um, a lot of the times, again, not as person-centered as we could be. And there's options that may help people that have, you know, maybe all of the things they need in order to move to something less restrictive, but there's just one or two areas that they may need um, just that extra boost. And also our goal is, um, you know, again, to help people move into independent living options. We work very closely with Money Follows the Person or MFP. And with trade, our goal is to help people transition out of nursing homes and congregate settings by using assistive technology. And with this, people are able to maintain independence at home. Um, some people have been in nursing homes quite a while. Other people try, you know, it's sometimes a quick, um, you know, transition in and out. But, you know, any time away from home is, it can be critical. We also provide training and technical assistance to staff, and that could be staff, you know, at group homes, nursing homes, um, you know, professional staff, be it um, therapists, you know, we work very closely with EI staff, uh, access VR staff, which again, not necessarily related to transition, but is an important aspect nonetheless. So these are all things that, you know, as, as the trade program that we're working to help people with across the state. And again, sometimes it comes down to just, you know, that one thing that can help somebody maintain independence through medication, preparing food, making sure that there's alarms to assist somebody if they're, you know, if something is going on in the kitchen or in the front door. So if you're, if this is something that's impacting, you know, somebody that you know, um, keep us in mind, this is something that we may be able to help with. And so that being said, I know we've thrown a lot of information at you and this is a lot of stuff that, you know, maybe you've never heard of trade and now you've heard all about trade. Um, we're gonna give you guys a 10 minute break just to kind of decompress, you know, see if you have any questions. And then when we come back, um, I'm gonna look to, again, our amazing trade staff and we'll have, you know, we'll have a fireside chat and kind of go over the things that they have done in their um, in their day-to-day -day lives and offer you guys some uh, suggestions and feedback, you know, when it comes to um, those critical transition um, periods in individuals' lives. Welcome back, everyone, from break. Um, thank you so much, Melinda, for the first part of this very informative session. We have a couple questions that we've received in the chat. Um, the first one, if we could just clarify, um, even though there isn't a trade center located in Nassau County, do Nassau County residents have access to trade services? Absolutely. The trade center that covers Long Island, which is both Suffolk and Nassau County, is located at... Um, the at silo we have a lot again acronyms silo or um, Suffolk independent living organization they are in Medford but they do cover both counties so even if you're in Nassau County um, they will work with you thank you 
available to everywhere. Trade is available everywhere in the state. Correct. Yep, yep. we cover every single county. Yep. Um, is assistive technology available to people who might have lost their assistive technology, uh, their wheelchairs, their rollators in a fire? Yep. I mean, for us that, you know, something like that, we would encourage you absolutely contact your local trade center, um, see if they have, you know, similar devices available in their inventory. And we can certainly see, you know, what we have that may be a good match for the time being. And again, sometimes we are able to donate things. It's never a guarantee, but absolutely feel free to, um, to ask your local trade center. Um, can it, what's the best way for a provider agency if they would like a, a presentation about assistive technology from a um, you know, trade center or from uh, the trade program? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Con I would say contact me. Um, my contact information will be at the end of this presentation. Uh, once I have that and I know kind of what it is that you're looking for, I do my best to match you to the trade staff that kind of has the most expertise in that field. Um, again, because we have such great staff, each one of them kind of has maybe not like a specialty, but they may be more familiar with certain things than others. So absolutely feel free to contact me through um, email or give me a call. Thank you. Uh, your contact information will be at the end of this as well. And mm -hmm. um, Great. Are trade centers open for walk-ins or are there COVID-related restrictions? I would say definitely call first. Um, most of our trade centers have lifted the majority of their COVID protocols, but again, you never know, you know if things change. Um, or depending on the region of the state, obviously when COVID first happened, you know, Westchester, New York City were hit really hard. Um, so, you know, feel free to, um, some trade centers do have walk-in hours, but I would say call ahead just to be sure. And we want to make sure, you know, if it's something that needs an appointment that they have the time they need to dedicate to your questions. Thank you. Um, just two more questions. Uh, do PTs have to approve and um, sign out the use of uh, devices for seating and mobility. Someone had heard that that was a, um, an issue. Some trade centers, again, do have specific requirements for liability purposes that, you know, if something is needed, that there's proper documentation. The trade staff themselves would be the ones to tell you that. Um, most of them, you know, for certain things are pretty flexible, but there are other areas, again, we want to make sure that we're not causing more harm than, than good. Um, so, yeah. Thank you. Um, and then the last question before I'll turn it back over to you. Um, what's the best way to get uh, AT evaluation to find out what might be helpful for adults living in residential settings um, so that they could use smart tech? in residences and things? So I do, it's actually a good question. I wanna differentiate. So trade offers, um, so there's demonstrations and there's evaluations. Sound very similar and in many ways they are. Um, an evaluation is more, is a clinical setting where a person has, you know, there's more things that are being looked at and I don't wanna say more things evaluated in the evaluation. Um, but these are more, you know, again, it's clinical. They're looking at a lot of things to submit to, you know, either um, insurance doc doctors, waivers, stuff like that. Um, I know when I was uh, an MSC, we would, you know, look for evaluations to put forward for uh, the waiver services through assistive technology through HCBS, or Home and Community Based Services. What we do as demonstrations is much more relaxed. Um, there's not a clinical aspect to it. So a person can come and check something out as kind of the first step. Um, so there's not, you know, a doctor that is kind of taking those meticulous notes as an evaluation. Some of our trade centers are able to refer people to organizations that they may know. Some of them actually do evaluations, um, not through trade, but through their agency. So Westchester Institute for Human Development, for example, is the Westchester Putnam and Dutchess County um, Trade Center. They offer trade services and they also do evaluations. So I would say, um, you know, contact either, you know, your local trade center um, if you have a primary care that may be able to assist as well, because um, there is a difference in what we do. Uh, and we, we definitely want to clarify that. So thank you for that question. Okay, thank you. That's it for now. Thanks. All righty. Um, so for the second part of our presentation, we wanted to actually ask the experts in the field when it comes to assistive technology, because it's one thing to hear me, you know, chit chat about um, what trade is and what trade does. And it's another to actually, you know, see the devices that we have, some of them, because again, if we did all of them, we would be here until next week, probably, and probably even longer than that. So um, just a heads up, we probably will have a little bit of back and forth, you know, up and down with the PowerPoint, because I do want to, you know, 
broach each question. We have, um, I believe, about nine altogether. I may be wrong in that, but um, we kind of want to pick the brains of the trade staff that are with us. So um, without further ado, bear with me again for one quick moment. I'm just going to pull that up. And then get us started again on part two. So alrighty, as um, again, we have two staff that are with us. Um, third was unable to join us today, but I'll be answering a couple of questions that she submitted. Um, so again, these are broad questions that we really wanted to focus on independent living. If you are interested in a presentation related to things like EI or early childhood, or maybe even working and access VR, feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to schedule something like that with you. But I'm gonna put this to our lovely trade staff again, Brendan and April. Um, what are your experiences with assistive technology and helping people become more independent in the community? And so um, I'm just gonna show a quick picture of one of the former trade staff out at the University of Buffalo. This is a staff uh, named Nathan Ramsey. There's actually three pieces of equipment that he's using right there. One is a pillow switch. If you see that little green circle around his head, um, he's obviously sitting in a seating device and he has a tablet. So there's actually three there if, you, if you're not quite sure where to look. So what do you guys, um, you know, what are your experiences um, in this realm, I should say? April, I'm going to call on you first. Okay. Um, so can you just repeat that, Melinda? I'm sorry. It's a long one, so I don't blame you. Um, so what are your guys' experience with AT and helping people become more independent in the community? So as you can see in the picture, the gentleman was using a pillow switch. He was using um, an iPad. Those are things that the Queensbury Center um, has both of those items. Um, so just kind of when somebody comes in and does a rundown of the th things that they're looking for, we can definitely broaden the scope. Um, we can show different pieces, um, ask different questions, kind of play off what their needs are and the problems or difficulties that they're having in their own home. Brendan, I don't know if it's the same out in Western New York, um, what you've got. And again, every trade center has, I should say, has kind of a nuance in how they do things. Everybody offers the same services, but they all have, you know, um, unique backgrounds and unique kind of um, takes on the different services that we offer, which is awesome because we get all those different perspectives. Yeah, so I'll highlight uh, maybe a story or an example from somebody that I'm working with currently. Um, and it'll, I'll answer, of course, we've got a ton of different equipment that we loan out for all kinds of different reasons, just like all the other trade centers do. Um, we have an, a special focus in um, sort of the higher tech, maybe you'd call it assistive technologies. Uh, what we do at UBCAD and our client facing services not related to trade directly is we do perform evaluation um, and AT training. Um, we do work with different uh, state run aid like Access VR or New York State Commission for the Blind or we take on private pay clients as well, um, as well as some different clients, K through 12 school districts in the area. Um, so one, one client that I'm working with, private pay client, she has received, received some funding through OPW. Um, that funding is, and she's using some of that funding to receive evaluation and training on smart home technologies. Um, she is, uh, she's very eager to move toward living totally independently of our family. Right now she lives at home uh, with her sister and mother, um, but she's working towards moving to a totally independent setting and she's roadmapped out exactly what that could look like and how she's going to get there. And a big piece of how she's gonna get there is uh, some different smart home technologies. And so she's really come to rely on trade to borrow these technologies and try, as Melinda talked about, try before you buy, because that funding is so, I mean, it's limited, it's very precious. Um, you can't just try something that's gonna cost a few hundred dollars and then say, well, that didn't really work as well as I wanted it to. Um, I'm gonna try something else. Um, so we come through, we do an evaluation through our client facing services kind of across the hall from where I am today. Um, and some training to get her set up with an iPad um, she's moving toward using a powered wheelchair that can use uh, that can mount a, an iPad 
and she can switch back and forth with switch control to controlling the wheelchair to controlling the iPad. So switch access for the iPad and tying all these smart home uh, devices through apps on the iPad and then controlling those with switch control opened up her entire home tour in a very literal sense. She can now um, open doors, she can now adjust the lights, adjust the temperature, adjust all kinds of things. Um, and a big part of that, a big part of getting her to that point was all the equipment that was available to her to borrow freely through the trade loan program. Excellent, thank you. And, and stories like that are, are pretty frequent um, with our trade programs. I know April, you have a really good one as well, um, which I'm very excited to hear. And I do wanna clarify, um, UV does evaluations. They are separate from trade, related through assistive technology, um, but again, um, UV does them, other ones do as well. So check with your local trade center um, to be 100% sure. So thank you both so much. We will be going into depth a little bit more on smart home technology in a little bit. Um, but next I want to talk about the opposite. Well, maybe not the opposite, but um, durable medical equipment, um, which maybe some of our audience has heard of, and maybe it's a completely new term. Um, so I want to, you know, see what you guys think. What are, what is DME, durable medical equipment? You know, um, I'm not even going to pull the PowerPoint up for that one because I'm just going to put it right back down again. So um, what's, um, what do you guys see every day in the world of DME? So when I hear DME, I feel like it's primarily um, a medical purpose. Um, it's devices that are used in home. They can be used again and again. Um, but with DME, it's only useful to patients who have um, an injury or disability. Um, so like orthotics, prosthetics, um, personal care aids, um, things that are specific to um, that individual. Cool. And we do, we do have questions about whether we do prosthetics. Um, the answer is typically no, we don't make them because it's a customized thing. Um, everybody is different, height, weight, all of those things. We may be able to point you in the right direction, but trade doesn't have um, prosthetics. Although some people 3D print some small things like thumbs, so who knows down the road what that might lead to. So, um, do you, Brendan, do you have anything um, on your end? If not, we can go to the next question. And as far as dur durable medical equipment, our trade closet gets used all the time. We have uh, here in Buffalo um, quite a few hospitals for both good and bad reasons, um, but one of those hospitals being Roswell, uh, we do have a, a very high rate, unfortunately, of, of cancer in this region because of our proximity to Niagara Falls and all the industry that used to go on there. Um, but the medical world has also been a huge uh, motor of growth in the area recently. We've got the medical corridor in Buffalo, um, which UB plays a part in. Um, and all those facilities mean many more patients mean many more patients who have some kind of intermittent need and don't necessarily want to buy a transport chair or crutches or any kinds of those types of durable medical goods, which you're going to need to get over an injury um, and maybe get over something for four to six weeks, and then you have no use for it anymore. Um, and so the, the trade program is a great resource for those people just trying to um, fulfill an intermittent need uh, with, durable, with durable medical equipment. Excellent. And if you do, if, you know, people that are listening and participating, if you do have that kind of a situation where um, maybe you end up with a piece of equipment temporarily and you're not sure what to do with it, again, contact your local trade center. Odds are that um, it's something we may be able to either uh, send out um, in our communities or keep for loan. So that being said, I had to um, pull up um, a slide from um, April's trade center in uh I always say Glens Falls, but it's not. It's Queensbury. I'm sorry. And um, sorry I'm out of place, but we will get there shortly. So, and then these are just some examples of, you know, some common devices. But again, one thing that we do hear sometimes is people say, well, I want the walker that has the seat built in. Um, if you're not sure what that is, uh, you know, if you describe it for us, we'd probably say it's a rollator. Um, but that's where we're, you know, the staff are experts in that. So, uh, we're happy to help with any questions with that because we do people will describe a device that you know maybe um, is older and we may have something newer or it might be that you know it's a rollator and people think it's a walker so here we have a transport wheelchair all the way on the left 
a uh, front wheeled walker, some crutches, a quad cane. There's different kinds of canes. This is a quad cane and um, I'm blocking it with our pictures. Um, so those are, again, a different kind of crutches, um, arm crutches. And I'm totally blanking on a few things. So if I say the wrong thing, guys, you guys are the experts. Forearm crutches are also Canadian Forearm crutches. crutches. Yes. See, this is why trade have, we have tons of experts that we're very lucky to have at our disposal. Um, so I wanted to kind of pick your guys' brains on what are some common devices that um, congregate settings recommend to individuals returning home because, uh, you know, when people are leaving, we want to make sure that they're not going back as much as humanly possible. And everybody's needs are unique, but there are several things that, you know, I tend to see in our notes because we do take very meticulous notes to make sure that we're tracking where things are, that they're safely returned, and that they are um, in good working order. And I had to share this picture because this is at the Glens Fall Center, just to give you a sense of um, sometimes we do have a lot of things to donate. So I'll let you take it away, April. So that um, picture is actually a wall of crutches that we have. Um, currently, there's a national sh shortage on crutches, and patients are actually getting sent home from the hospital non-weight bearing with no crutches because there's a shortage. And here we have a wall of about 90 crutches. So um, we've reached out to both of our local hospitals just to let them know, hey, send everybody our way. We have lots and lots of crutches available. Um, I think we just happen to be the dump center for used crutches. <laughs> the opportunity center <laughs> for lots of used crutches. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, but when people are discharged from congruent settings or nursing homes, um, the number one device that they are sent home with is a mobility device. Um, mobility devices uh, account for 25% of discharges. Um, so mobility devices could be wheelchairs, transport chain, chairs, walkers, canes. Um, and then closely followed up is um, devices to assist with ADLs. So like commodes, shower chairs, uh, tub transfer benches, and then also um, safety devices. So you have bed rails, um, grab bars, window and door alarms, um, bed alarms and floor alarms as well to alert caregivers of patients maybe that have some cognitive disabilities going on, you know, to help them, you know, track and, and keep patients safe in their homes. Excellent. Those are the most commonly used um, items, you know, upon discharges and, you know, transitioning back into the home after being at a facility. Okay. So something to keep in mind, you know, for those of you that are listening, if you're, you know, experiencing something like this or somebody on your caseload that you're wondering, you know, is this something to keep in the back of your mind? Um, you know, definitely um, keep us in the back of your mind at the same time. So, uh, Brendan, I don't know if you guys have similar things out in Buffalo. Definitely, yeah. Um, well, very similar things. I think all of those things that were mentioned, um, and I'm sure a few others. But uh, one thing to add, we of course we love it when people come with questions and describe a need and ask if we can match that need with some kind of device. Um, but we also invite and really encourage people if you're working with some kind of a professional, if you're working with a PT or an OT or somebody um, as you're getting discharged from the hospital and you've got that list of equipment that you should have in your home, just hand it over to us. And that's a great starting point. Um, and we can kind of check things off your list or um, uh, trade, trade is also, of course, the things that we get for our own closets are driven by community feedback. So if there are things that are on your list and we don't have them, then we want to get them for you um, and get them in your hands so we can, so you can borrow them. And we do replenish our inventories constantly. You know, as things break, uh, they become obsolete. You know, sometimes we'll either, um, and I, but when I say we, I mean, you know, the 12 trade centers and all the staff that are there, it, these are devices that might be scrapped if they're in really bad shape or not. I mean, just to the point where it's just not worth loaning it out. They may be permanently donated, whatever it happens to be. But at the end of the day, um, our inventories are constantly being replenished, um, as Brandon said, through feedback from people in the community, either uh, counselors, uh, you know, professionals and the people that are using these devices themselves. So definitely, if you have an idea, let us know. Maybe we have it already and maybe it's something we haven't heard of, but maybe a good um, thing to try out. So 
Alrighty, going from DME to smart home technology. So um, people may have heard about it. You may even have it in your homes if you have Alexa or, you know, anything like that. Um, you have either maybe used it or at least are familiar with it, or maybe you've never heard of it at all. So we just want to give you an overview of what the heck is smart home technology and how does it relate to uh, independent living. So I'm actually going to turn... Again, this is, you know, just um, an example of, you know, when we think smart home, it's more than just um, turning on the TV or changing the song that you have making dinner. So, all righty. Brendan, I'm going to go to you with this one. I feel like a reporter right now. In the field, Brendan, what do you have for <laughs> us? Thanks, Melinda. No. Um, <laughs> We, so yeah, smart home technology, uh, that term kind of gets thrown around a lot and can mean a lot of different things, but essentially all it means is some other way to switch something on and off, whether, and whether um, it's changing the switch on your wall to actually be a smart home switch so that you could turn that on and off through an app on your phone uh, or with your voice, your voice connect as the switch or whatever it is, whatever alternative means you have to switching that thing on and off. Um, if you can plug it into a wall or if it runs on a battery, um, there's a pretty good chance that you could turn it into a smart device or there's some kind of smart home device version of that product on market. Um, and we have built a mock-up, um, I'm gesturing in front of me, but I'd be better off showing, sharing my screen or my second camera rather. Um, we've built a mock-up smart wall to demonstrate a lot of these different products. Um, and we can loan out quite a few of these. Some of these are not going to be able to be loaned out. Um, and maybe I should talk a little bit about that first. Um, it's a great idea. Uh, if you're thinking about getting or getting into some smart home technologies and implementing these technologies in your own home, um, it's a good idea to talk to somebody else first, unless you absolutely know everything that you know upfront that you want to bring into your home, you know the platform that you're planning on using, you know um, the platforms everybody in your house may have access to or may not have access to. Um, it's definitely worthwhile to talk to somebody, whether it's somebody um, like me at a trade center um, or even somebody like at Best Buy, at the Apple store, um, pick their brains, see what they know, because well, each of these devices on its own can be very simple, and a lot of them are very simple to set up. Um, simple things added one on top of the other become very complex systems very quickly. Uh, and it's, it's a terrible experience, I'm speaking from personal experience, to get into the middle of um, well, now, okay, I've got these like six or eight, maybe 10 smart home devices hooked up in my house. I had this 11th device in mind to kind of tie into my ecosystem, but the compatibility isn't really there. Um, or it's there, but it's kind of this really onerous workaround that I don't want to deal with. I'd rather just buy a different device. So that's where trade can come in. Um, try all these things before you buy them. Speak with somebody uh, like myself to make sure all the different platforms that you're planning on using are going to be compatible with one another. And when I say platform, I just mean um, a great starting point for anybody is, hey, I've got an iPhone in my pocket. What can I connect this thing to that would be smart home devices in my home? Um, or, hey, I've already got a couple of Google Assistant features at, or uh, speakers at home. What could I connect that thing? What can I make that speaker do other than like tell me the weather in the morning? Um, so we built this smart wall or rather we had it built. Um, I'm gonna share a second camera for a moment and just walk through a, a few of the things and a few of the devices that we have on hand to either loan or demonstrate. All right, and to start off, actually I'm gonna switch my camera to the back of my laptop. Along the bottom of your screen right now, you're seeing an LED light strip. And along the top of my wall, I've got a, uh, a sensor. This sensor is a Philips Hue sensor, and that light strip is a Philips Hue light strip. I've also got a desk lamp. Say I am somebody got up in the middle of the night and I need to use the restroom or something, my lights are out, I can't see my hall. As I move through the hall, that sensor sees me 
and turns on the light strip. It turns it on to a low light setting. I've already set that light setting ahead of time so that it's not gonna like blind me and wake me straight out of my sleep. Um, but it gives me enough light to see. Or if it doesn't, I might be able to do something like tell the uh, tell whichever assistant I'm using, uh, Alexa, turn Philips Hue to 80%. Did you mean desk lamp? Yes. Desk lamp isn't responding. Ah. Please check its network connection and power supply. Okay, that didn't work. Hey Google, turn Hue to 80%. There we go. And now my Hue turns. I'm gonna turn the lights back on. I'm gonna switch my camera to the original camera so we can look at some other things. Um, but starting from the left, um, and these are all devices that I can access in a number of different ways. Because they are smart home devices, um, generally that means I'm connecting it through an app. I may have to use some kind of a bridge that connects it to my Wi-Fi network, um, but I'm connected to the app. Uh, if I'm using speakers or smart displays, um, I can use my voice to access these different things. Um, and starting with maybe the TV on the left, uh, this TV I can turn on and it's also plugged into a Roku, both of which I can activate by voice. If I just think of my TV as the Roku, I can say, Alexa, turn on Roku. And of course, this is working during the break and not now. Alexa, turn on Roku. Okay. There we go. Turns on the TV for me. I can actually navigate this with my voice. I'm not going to take the time to do that now. Um, we've got some uh, smart thermostats, smart switches. Those are things, um, and here's where maybe simple setup doesn't really apply. Those are going to be hardwired things. So some smart home technologies, maybe it's worthwhile to come in for a demonstration, but um, you might need the assistance of a professional, somebody, an electrician maybe, who can actually wire these devices into your wall. Um, and that's also true for things like smart doors, doors that I can open maybe with the touch of a, uh, of a button. So on the right there, I've got a door. I've got a, a button beside me on my desk here that I'm going to hit to open the door for me and reveals which suite we're in here on this side of the hall. Um, down below that door, uh, I've got a couple of smart dis displays. In the very lower right of your screen, you've got uh, an Alexa uh, smart display. And then just beside it, just to the left of that, is a Google display. Um, those I can tell different. Um, I've got some Arlo uh, doorbell camera as well as a security camera. I've also got an interior camera, a Google Nest camera. So I could tell it, um, I could tell my Google display something like, hey Google, show Nest Cam. And there we go. I'm up on the, I probably can't see that. I'm, uh, it's a view of me and I'm waving to you there. And you can tell it, hey Google, stop. Um, or because this is connected to an app, I'm gonna bring up on the TV really quickly. And then I'm promise I'm done with the demonstration. Let's see. My iPad screen, which is connected over AirPlay, um, which I can use if I've got an Apple TV or something like that, um, or an AirPlay ready device. Uh, but I can go into any of these apps. So if I, I've got that fan, and that fan is just plugged into the wall. There's nothing smart about the fan itself, but I've adapted with a smart plug. Um, and I could say, hey, Google, turn on fan. And that happens to be an Insteon plug. So if I jump into up on my display here, into the Insteon app, maybe I don't have my voice to use, but I do have switch control over my iPad. I could turn that fan off using the connected app. Uh, so that's really, and I'm gonna jump out of the screen share here. 
that's really just scratching the surface um, as far as smart home technologies. And they can get very, very complicated, as I said, very quickly. Um, definitely worth a, a stop into something like the Trade Center to borrow some of these devices before you buy them, particularly because if you were to set up, say, this smart home setup at your own home, just the devices that you've seen, which aren't all the devices that we have available and in boxes and everything else, um, would easily be a couple thousand dollars. Um, you don't want to invest that kind of time and money without knowing that something like that is going to work. Excellent, thank you, Brendan. And it really, um, you mentioned briefly, you know, a lot of these things are, you know, things that you can find at Best Buy or Amazon or what have you. And not everybody needs all of those different settings. There's, you know, sometimes it really is, you know, something simple, maybe one or two. But like you said, it's definitely something you don't want to, you know, invest a ton of time and money without asking, trying, seeing what's going to work. Because as we said earlier, you know, looking at this from a person-centered point of view is really, you know, what's going to help kind of direct people to what is potentially either the best option, most cost effective, and most, um, you know, something that's going to work best for them. So thank you very, I learn something new every time. And I like knowing, you know, myself and my own kind of thing, like I'm afraid I would, you know, ask it to do something and turn on a blender, but even I think I could probably handle that. So um, you kind of covered this and I am going to pull up the um, PowerPoint again because we have an example that I love sharing uh, from our Westchester Center, which is again at the Westchester Institute for Human Development. Um, they have staff that are very well versed in what we call AAC or Alternative Augmentative Communication. Not that other trade centers don't, but they have been, you know, doing a lot with 3D printing, a lot with, um, you know, customization, LAMP, which is an acronym, which off the top of my head, I can't remember. There's always like two or three, um, but uh, with LAMP, it's basically alternative um, devices to helping people, you know, communicate that may not be text on a page or, you know, through other kinds of technology. So, um, what are some of the most common uses of smart home technology? I know Brendan talked, you know, quite a bit about just some of the examples that they have there. I just want to share this picture really quickly. This is of Emma S., who is 93 years old. Uh, she lives in the Westchester area, not in Westchester, but in their region. Um, her great-granddaughter actually reached out to us uh, because she had been affected by COVID, and Emma, who was, you know, her great-grandmother, was living alone and had, you know, a really difficult time with no nobody being able to check on her because people near her had caught COVID and had, you know, been really, really um, had a lot of health complications. So the great granddaughter reached out to me and said, what do we do? We want to see that she's okay. We want to make sure that things are going all right. Uh, we referred this to, again, WID or Westchester Institute for Human Development. They met with the family. They loaned her a tablet. And the family took the picture that you can see here of Emma, her great granddaughter and her great great granddaughter. Um, they can check on how she's doing, chat, and, you know, make sure that they can see each other. And tablets, you know, are great for telehealth, which has been, you know, increased even more so again because of COVID. And they thanked the AT loan program manager, who is Beth Hyde, and said, my five-year-old drops in every morning and evening before bed. We are able to connect several times a day, all thanks to you. Again, just one story that we have uh, just to kind of show, you know, the kinds of things that we're loaning. And this was just a tablet. Again, it could be anything from an iPad to, you know, Google tablet. There's so many things that can be used with them. So, um, you know, either Brendan or April, if there's any, you know, quote unquote, common devices that you see people requesting, you know, I think maybe a tablet because so much can go into them. Anything else that you would um, advice that you would have for people with questions? Definitely. Um, yeah, aside from tablets, um, switches, people and people trying to access devices maybe they already have um, using some kind of an alternative method uh, like switch control or just like through demonstration through voice control. We've all got a voice assistant, a voice activated assistant in our pocket, whether or not we know how to use it. Um, and so through a trade demonstration, we can really kind of help that person leverage the device they already own uh, to, to greater agency and greater independence in their environment. Um, let's see, I mean, aside from, yeah, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of switches, whether that's light switches or otherwise, 
Um, it's a lot of outlet adapters for adapting simple things you already have, like a lamp or that fan. Um, the smart displays are really nice. Uh, maybe I don't want to manage a tablet or anything, or um, maybe I can't, but the smart display could also get me that same video call every day. Um, and it's something that I could just activate with my voice and say, hey, call the grandkids uh, or whatever. And have that dial through on the other end, it's going to take some setup by the family to whatever that is, Google duo or through Amazon, through the app or whatever. Um, oh, let's see. Lots of light bulbs. Um, and we have things like the, you know, the Philips Hue bulbs and the, and the bridge to borrow. Um, those, those motion sensors also, uh, a lot of cameras, whether that's indoor or outdoor, whether they're security cameras or for doorbells, um, we even have, if you're renting and you can't really make hardware changes in your, in your place or, or put a camera in the door, we've got people cameras. If you've got an apartment with a people, you can, um, usually that's a pretty easy yes from a landlord just to, I just need to take this out and put this other people thing through there and it doesn't actually screw into your door or anything like that. Um, and then a lot of the different, uh, Aside from the television itself, which we can't loan out, but those things that you can plug into your television. So the Roku and the Apple TV um, and some of the different things that will allow you to stream content and get content up on your screen, maybe through an app or through use of your voice. Excellent. Yes, we can't loan out TVs, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, unless there's some crazy new type of technology, which, hey, who knows what direction we're headed in. April, I know it's not necessarily smart home, but um, I know Sale has the adaptive kitchen. And I, um, if you could talk a little bit about what that's like and um, the kinds of things you guys have. Um, so yes, we do have an adaptive kitchen. Um, it's set up so that somebody can wheel their wheelchair underneath the um, appliances. So there's actually burners on top where the stove is not. So they can roll right underneath, be right up close to um, the knobs and the switches. Um, we do have cutting boards um, as well as um, some appliances, automatic jar openers. Um, I said we have the cutting board. Um, and we do have um, some mixers and things like that are, that are all automated. Um, and we also, I know um, Brendan was talking about telephones and smart tech and stuff, and I did, um, I would like to share my screen. Yes, I would have been looking forward <laughs> to that, so bear with me one second. There, there you go, you should, the floor should be yours. So we also have, um, so we had a consumer that was um, in a nursing home. They had been placed um, due to COVID in some decreased um, abilities. They got really sick, needed to go to a nursing home for a little bit to recoup and recover. Part of the discharge plan was that they needed to speak to um, a representative over the phone to do an intake to decide whether or not they were able to be discharged home safely. Um, the biggest concern was that while in the nursing home and using the nursing home telephone, the um, consumer couldn't hear the representative on the other line to do the intake. So after several failed attempts of bringing in a cordless phone, bringing in um, you know, a smartphone from the family members, the individual still could not hear well on the phone. Um, this is where the service coordinator reached out to trade and asked if we had anything and lo and behold, we had um, an amplified telephone. Um, so they were able to bring that to the nursing home, unplug the nursing home's phone, plug this phone in, and she was able to complete her intake. She could hear the operator on the other line asking all of the questions. Um, she was able to complete that um, intake and get discharged home from the nursing home. And one of the concerns as she discharged home was that they were going to have some aid services in place, but there was going to be a gap where she needed to remember to take her medications at a certain time where there was not going to be anybody there to actually remind her. Um, being an older woman, she was not aware of smart technology, so um, Trade actually loaned her out um, an automatic medication dispenser. So it 
holds up to nine different medications in one slot. There's alarms that will go off to alert. The alarm won't stop going off unless there's been acknowledgement made and the medications have actually been taken. It also is a locked box. So a family member could set up the meds for the day, for the week, and even for the month. Um, and the alarm will go off up to six times a day to alert um, the consumer that it's time to take their medication. Um, so that was a very, you know, way for them to be able to live independently in home, um, to be able to use the phone and communicate when they did need help, but yet also to get their med reminders um, if they forgot to take their medication during the day. Excellent. Thank you so much, April. And we've heard, I mean, stories, like not stories, but like anecdotes like that, we've heard so many times, time and time again, of people that, you know, again, they need just that one thing in order to transition home safely, you know, be it medication or safely navigating the home, a mobility device. Um, some of our trade centers, not all of them have threshold ramps for wheelchairs. Some have larger ramps. Um, again, it really depends on the trade center because we want to make sure that people are safe and um, that, you know, things like zoning are being taken into consideration and the ramps are appropriately sized um, for ADA guidelines. So it's something that we hear quite a bit and it's something that we have been able to help with now that again, COVID is hopefully, um, you know, restrictions are being lifted. We still have, uh, you know, people that come to us that are still transitioning out. And these are just some of the things that we're able to offer them in that process. So thank you both again, um, coming into the home stretch. So thank you to all of us that are, or to all of us, to all of you that are still with us. Um, there was one, um, one of our programs, which again is Wraparound Services of the Hudson Valley, has a new initiative that we just wanted to share some information with you guys on. And this is um, something that is unique to them, but something that you know most trade centers are offering. So um, some resources for low cost or fabricated devices that you guys may not have heard of. The first is Project ACT, which is again by WSHV. Um, again, Casey had an emergency and is unable to be here. However, we wanted to let you guys know um, Project ACT is a new program available through the Hudson Valley Trade Center. Um, the trade coordinator put it together to assist communities in transition. And its goal is to assist people being discharged from nursing homes, hospitals, rehab facilities, assisted living centers, or any other supported environments um, back to living independently in their homes. And this is achieved by donation of necessary adaptive equipment or technology. At that trade center, they receive many donations um, that they clean, fix up, or um, take care of any minor issues, and then donate them back out into the community. They also can use equipment that has been outdated from their inventory, still safe, but maybe isn't made anymore. So it couldn't, you know, replacement parts may not be easily available. Um, and because their inventory is constantly changing, they have things that are rotated out. Um, and then these include things like crutches, wheelchairs, walkers, adaptive silverware, uh, rollators, canes, bath chairs, and benches. Again, everything is sanitized before it is loaned out. Riften, um, which is a brand of assistive technology, uh, Riften trams, gate trainers, and much more. Um, and the goal of Project ACT is to help people in achieving a smooth transition out into the community. So um, there are other programs that are out there. Trade does, you know, a lot of times have, again, equipment um, like DME, durable medical equipment that they're able to donate. Uh, the best way of finding out it, that out is to contact your local trade center. Um, but I wanted to ask you guys, April and Brendan, if you had any other advice for people. And I do want to again mention we are at the very beginning of a 3D printing, um, you know, goal or initiative. And if anybody is curious about that as it develops, um, feel free to reach out to us with any questions. And I will say, you know, some of the things that, you know, uh, that I've seen, you know, that might be good resources, um, local, you know, we're working right now in the beginning phases of a project with Habitat for Humanity that receives a lot of donations. The local um, Veterans, Asso um, Veterans Association, VA, um, a lot of times will have, you know, devices that can um, be re refurbished, um, you know, things like that. And we also... Um, we would encourage you to, again, check with trade because um, a lot of times local trade staff will be aware of things that maybe I might not be based out of the Schenectady office. So those are just a couple of examples.
Melinda, we have a couple questions um, mm -hmm. that I might as well ask now before we lose many people. Um, are trade centers open to field trips? You know, if a, a per, you know provider agency or an MSC had a, a lot of people that they wanted to bring and show um, assistive technology, is that a, a possible? Absolutely. It, um, I know our Binghamton office, um, Southern Tier Independent Center, they frequently work with um, Binghamton uh, University's PT or OT students. They'll come through as a class. They'll ask questions. The staff at trade will kind of walk them through different things depending on what it is that they may be specializing in. Um, again, it does depend on the policies of the Trade Center, you know, with, with COVID in consideration. But um, I think Buffalo, I think you guys have had people. I think Maybe Glens Falls, you guys have had people, not 100%. Okay, yes, I'm right. Um, but absolutely, you know, depending on where you are in the state, feel free to contact your local trade center, see what their availability is, um, and they'll probably be able to work something out with you, even if it's a virtual tour. Great. And there was one question which you answered at the beginning, so I'll try it again um, in case the person wasn't here. Um, the question was, why in the world is the trade is trade part of the Justice Center? Um, so the... the trade, the federal funding for trade, and then the um, funding agreements with our state partners, Access VR and the Department of Health, were all um, in place with the Commission on Quality of Care, an advocate for persons with disabilities. And when the Justice Center was created in uh, June of 2012, and then came into being in June of 2013, the Justice Center, um, the legislative term was absorbed all of the functions of the Commission on Quality of Care and Advocacy for Persons with Disabilities. And we have, um, and so trade has been part of the Justice Center ever since. We're very um, proud to have trade as part of the Justice Center and, um, and our partnership with the trade centers. That's the last question I have received. Okay, well, we're almost, we're in the home stretch. Um, I think we just have one more that I'm gonna put forward to April and Brendan. And um, yes, yeah, so we are we are the smallest department at the at um, the Justice Center at the Justice Center itself. It is just me, but I couldn't do this without April, Brendan, um, Joel, Beth, Beth, and um, all the other amazing people at Trade. So, um, I think again we're in the last question. Um, and every time I look for my share screen, wouldn't you know it? I forget where it is. Um, So yeah, definitely, if you're in the Hudson Valley region, check out um, Project ACT. Uh, Casey Thomas is the staff there who's very, very experienced and she'd be happy to review that with you. Hopefully you guys um, you know that went through really quickly. Bear with me, I'm very sorry. So last question, where can people learn more about trade? And I do have a very nice picture of Erin Brunel and Brendan at, I'm not sure where this is, um, but um, one of the many conferences I'm sure you guys have been at. Um, well, of course, you can learn more about AT uh, directly through trade. This conference, I am trying to remember where this is from. Um, I, I did find the shirt for continuity. I couldn't find the tie. I don't know where it went. But um, I think that was, uh, there are always conferences going on relatively locally to just about anywhere you are in New York State. Um, and there will at least be an annual conference in your area. I know in the Buffalo area, there are quite a few, and those are typically, um, several of them are open to the public. So conferences uh, like the one that you're seeing here, great resource. Um, look for more AT uh, online. There's been a big push from all the major major tech providers to not just push into assistive technology specifically, but push deeper into universal design. And so if you've got a Windows laptop, you've got a whole bunch of accessibility resources built right into that laptop already. Um, in the Ease of Access Center, if you're still on Windows 10 or now just elevated to the general settings in Windows 11, or same thing with a Mac, same thing with, a, with a, you know, an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone, um, they've all got assistive technologies kind of baked right into them now. Um, so tap into those major major tech providers as resources. They've all got great supports online. Uh, some of them even have brick and mortar stores like the Apple store. You can go consult an Apple genius. Um, 
And then when you've got more questions, you can come and borrow a device from Trey. They won't let you do that at the Apple Store, of course, but we've got iPads that you can borrow. Unfortunately. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's and some additional instruction, and we can answer, of course, any questions that you have that are very specifically accessibility related. And we're at a phase even where, you know, big companies are embracing a lot of, you know, things related to accessibility. You know, there's adaptive video game controllers that look, you know, way different from a typical PlayStation controller, but can be used by somebody that may need a switch or may need different, um, you know, different dimensions on the controller. So you may very well be using adaptive technology that you haven't turned on all the features that you've had in your pocket for years now. So definitely reach out to us. Um, and if it's something that we can't help with, uh, we probably know who could. And if you're interested in things, you know, we didn't really touch on things like uh, employment or early childhood. Um, as April said, they have uh, an EI room for kiddos to come and try things out. Um, I don't know if you want to say a couple of words about that, but um, it's always great for you know kiddos to actually be able to interact with things and experience them for themselves. Yeah, so we did just open up an EI room. Um, our goal is to get more EI out in the community. Um, and by EI, it's early intervention. Um, children are the age of three. Um, and we do have a room set up. It's a sensory room. We have some swings in there. We have some sit and spins. We have all kinds of sensory and fidget toys. Um, we have some adapted wagons, um, strollers, um, toys in general, puzzles, um, communication devices. So we've kind of pulled all of our EI things and put them together in one room and have set up like a sensory slash EI room for kids to come in and explore um, and then to borrow the items that we have and to loan them out, sign them out, take them home, try them, play with them, bring them back in exchange for some new, some new things. Thank you, thank you. And that um, we also in Binghamton, they have um, a smart uh, or a, um, an EI room. They're working on a smart, um, smart room set up, uh, and that goes for many of the trade staff and may, many of the trade centers. Our Plattsburgh office works with Clarkson University, who have an amazing um, OT and PT program. They have an entire, it's almost like a warehouse-sized area that they'll work on different types of devices and set them up in a realistic setting so that people can use them. Uh, each trade center, as I said, is unique in how they do things and are all, you know, I would encourage anybody to reach out if you have questions. Uh, and just um, some other resources that I wanted to make you guys aware of. Um, the Equipment Loan Fund, which is through the Office of Children and Family Services, OCFS. They offer low interest loans that can be used specifically for assistive technology. I know people get nervous when they hear the word loan, um, but this is when I say a very underutilized resource, I truly mean it. It's a wonderful program that has um, you know, a fairly simple application process and allows people to, you know, have some flexibility when it comes to financing something that isn't covered maybe by a waiver or a grant. Uh, another is ABLE loans and ABLE accounts, which are through the National Disability Institute. ABLE loans are similar to the Equipment Loan Funds. They are low interest that can be used for assistive technology or ABLE accounts, which are, um, and I don't want to misquote, um, they are accounts that people can have set aside for, you know, for, um, for money that can be used for disability related expenses. So it can be used for um, anything from rent to assistive technology and many other things. So definitely reach out to the National Disability Institute on their website below for more information. Um, the staff there is named Lori Schaller, and she is wonderful and can answer questions beyond that as well. And then also independent living centers in general. I know when I was in MSC, we have a lot of questions about things like benefits. You know, how does SSI work? How does a waiver work? Definitely tap into your local independent living centers. Five of our trade centers are located at independent living centers, including Glens Falls or um, Sale. You know, also our centers out in Rochester, Binghamton, um, Corning, which covers, you know, southwestern New York, and then also, um, there, oh, I was going to say Long Island. If I forgot Long Island, they would let me know. So um, definitely check them out for questions that you have related to things even beyond assistive technology. And so final portion of our presentation today, you guys have been great and very patient. Um, we do have a, a um, advisory council, the Interagency Partnership on Assistive Technology. We provi it provides um, advice to the state, i.e. us, the Justice Center, regarding 
Um, Nope, gotta move that. Activities um, carried out through the grant, uh, including setting measurable goals. So we basically want to make trade as good as it can be, as strong as it can be, and as responsive to the needs of the various communities in New York as it can be. We have a great mix of people that are geographically representative of the entire state. We meet twice a year for about two hours, and we are putting this out there because we're always looking for strong advocates that have a passion for assistive technology that can help us, you know, direct where we go next with our program. So if you're if you know anybody that is interested, let us know, reach out, and we can provide any um, information that you might need. And as I said, if you do have questions that go beyond this, or you're just, you know, you, after the, we close out, you're not sure, that is my direct contact, that is my email, um, 5490220, which is, um, if you call 5490200, I believe that'll go to our information line, and they can also assist you with things like donation or other resources in the community. So, um, that's been trade. Um, we wouldn't be who we are without our amazing staff at the 12 trade centers. Um, and yeah, so we'll open it up. If anybody has any other lingering questions, we're happy to answer them. We don't see any questions. Um, and this group has been pretty good about posting them. So I think, um, I think we're done. And I see that we know there's a, you know, a PDF of today's overview that is available in the chat. Yes, the PDF will be made available or yeah. the um, the PowerPoint will be made available. You'll get it all um, in your email soon. So just be patient. And thank you all for your interest. And um, we hope this isn't the last we hear from any of you about trade. We hope um, you go out and spread the word and make life better for people through assistive technology. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, um, April. And thank you, Brendan. Yep. Thanks for Have having nice us. Have a good evening, everyone. Take Thank care, you. everyone.